Hello everybody, today we're talking about musical technical troubleshooting, so I'm not going to mess about, we're going straight in for it. Point one, the whole approach to troubleshooting is about trying to isolate where the problem is. So the first thing you should do, if we say, for example, here's Cubase, ah, oh, I can't hear anything coming out of it, is you say to yourself, okay, can I hear the audio output from the computer on any other program? If I put a bit of YouTube or a Windows Media Player or iTunes, am I hearing the audio come out then? If you're not, then you have to start looking, for example, at the sound card. Is the sound card working? How can I replace that? Can I plug a pair of headphones into the computer? Can I hear it that way? So the whole point is you look at each part of the signal chain and you try and swap things out to find out where the problem is. And once you've identified exactly where the problem is, then you can start diving in and trying to fix it. Now, if you um, look on, for example, a, a what can be a really awesomely uh, oh, kind of problem, like you've got a difficult plug-in somewhere in your signal chain and you just don't know which one it is. You think, oh, how am I going to find the right, which one it is? What you do <clears throat> is if you have, for example, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of um, plugins like this, first thing you do is you turn half of them off. <clears throat> Do you still have the problem? Does your computer still crash? If it does, then you know that the problem is still in that half. Then you turn half of the half off. If you still have the problem, then you know it's in that quarter. If you don't have the problem, you know it's in the other quarter. So if you go on this rule of halves, you keep on halving, and very quickly, even out of hundreds of plugins, you'll start to get down to the one which is causing the problem. And that is a really quick way of trying to resolve um, those kind of issues. Now. Beyond that, one of the most common problems uh, when it comes to uh, music tech problems is just simply running out of computer resources. So the first thing you should check after you've gone through this process is how, how much RAM you've got, um, how much memory, how much CPU, how much uh, uh, space on your disk drives. On a PC, right click on the taskbar, bring up Task Manager. Next thing to do, click on Performance. And then you'll see it'll say CPU and it's currently running at 7%. So that's absolutely almost nothing. Um, memory, 9 gigabytes out of 128. So that's not an issue. If you have CPU, which is anything over about 50%, um, and what you should do is you should run Task Manager while you're running back the program so you can start to see what it does when it's actually running. If it goes much over 50%, you could well run into trouble. And the reason is... <clears throat> You'll, quite, uh, you'll often get these things called CPU spikes. So every now and again, it'll put a lot more demand on the, on the processor, and that spike can cause the program to crash. So you want to make sure that your CPU is um, around the 50% or less mark, if you possibly can. Um, and memory, again, you need a bit of um, headroom at the top. If it's right up, if it's almost full, it's gonna, your computer will become unreliable. What if you're on a Macintosh? Uh, you go to the Utilities folder and you look for Activity Monitor. Activity Monitor does exactly the same thing as this Task Manager stuff. So you can go in there and you can look at the CPU, the you know all that kind of malarkey, and see if you've got a problem. Okay, so it works just as well on the Mac. Disk space is another one. You can't fill up a disk until there's nothing left. Um, if it's an old-style spinny drive, in other words, not an SSD, um, they start their performance starts going down. Pretty much anything over halfway full, it starts to get slower. And so by the time you're three quarters full or over, it's getting really, really sluggish. SSDs don't suffer from that problem to the same degree, but you still need enough room, particularly on your system drive, which is on your C drive on a PC or your system drive on a Mac, because all these pieces of software are going to be writing cache files backwards and forwards. They need a bit of, you know, bit of headroom in order just to do their thing. And if you don't give them the headroom, they're going to go, uh -oh, and they're going to crash. So, you know, be nice. Make a bit of room on your um, uh, on your um, your drive, and this is particularly true if you're installing software, because the installation process will mean it has to sort of download, um, you know whatever, a gigabyte worth of or something of stuff, um, uncompress it, it's another gigabyte. Then the, so the whole installation process can take more resources than the actual program when it's um, running by itself. So those are the top three things. Um, the next thing you need to start looking at is things like compatibility. Um, so um, is my program up to date? Because all the time software producers are squashing bugs. And 
the bug which is causing your problem could well have been solved in a later update. So you want to look at your, uh, you want to look at the program. You want to get in there, get into find the uh, about Cubase or whatever it is, and see what version you're running. A lot of the time, uh, there here we are down here. It says uh, there I am. I'm 10.520 build 179 built on May the 5th, 2020. So you a lot of programs will also give you a check for updates. So that's a really good thing um, to to do as well. But particularly on Macs at the moment, those of you running 10.15 um, Catalina, there are lots of compatibility issues and almost every piece of software has had to be updated to run with Catalina. So you need to check the operating system which is running on your machine and uh, the version number of the um, software you're running and then go to the uh, website for the sample uh, for the software producer and make sure that your software is the latest and is compatible with that operating system but it sort of goes further than that because it's also down to versions of plugins versions of drivers for audio so this is a real game of cards and it's kind of ah, ah, you know how do i juggle all these things at once it's just too terrible for words and it can be indeed quite stressful. Error codes. If you um, are trying to start a piece of software or something and you come up with an error code, then you need to Google it. I mean, you take literally the, the error code you've got and you paste it into uh, Google, like here we go, system error code, zero to four nine nine zero, you know, all this kind of gobbledygook. And if you Google it, mysteriously, up comes the explanation of what your error code means. And then a lot of the time you will be able to find other people have had the same thing, and then you'll find a way of sorting it out. Um, if it's not that straightforward, it's, I mean, the other thing to do is when you're Googling it, put it in inverted commas. So Google search for exactly um, that error code, um, because it's almost definitely the problem you're suffering from, somebody else has suffered from in the recent past. Um, now one or two more basic things, which um, a lot of the time, before you start diving into uh, start reformatting your hard drive, reinstalling software, and looking at your um, uh, BIOS and all that kind of thing. Check the cables. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've wasted days trying to figure out a problem only to find a cable wasn't completely properly plugged in or the cable just failed. They sort of do. I don't know how this works. How does it work? I plug in a cable, I leave it plugged in, I don't touch it and then it fails. I mean, how does that anyway this happens this is a thing so don't let it happen to you um before you start reformatting everything and doing really ghastly sort of deep cleaning change the cable you know if the drive's not working don't reformat the drive try changing the the cable which goes to the drive or you know if you can't hear anything maybe it's the actual audio cable itself okay so it's always worth checking these really basic hardware things um, before you start assuming that there's some complicated technical reason um, for all these problems. Um, the last and most obvious thing, and then, you know, everybody knows this, but they don't always do it, is turn it off and on. Oh, he's told me to turn it off. I know, but it's more than just turning it off and on. It's doing a cold restart. In other words, don't just go, oh, restart, shping, back up and... Ah. No, shut it down. Shut down the power to everything else. Turn everything off in the studio. Go and have a cup of tea. Think Zen thoughts. Then come back, turn it on, and see if the problem's gone away. Okay? So a proper cold restart is what's required, not just a quick <laughs> type job. Lastly, there is a really good chance that this device, you're watching this video on right now, uh, if it's a computer, or even if not, will give you grief at some point in the next few months. So why don't you back it up now? Why don't you make a nice, clean backup copy? And so when it goes wrong, you've got something to fall back on. If you're on a Mac, use Time Machine. It's absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best things about being on a Mac. It just does it seamlessly in the background. If you're on a PC, there's system tools to do this. They're not quite so intuitive or quite so good, frankly, um, but there are third party solutions. I use Backblaze, which is a cloud server solution where it just backs it up in the background all the time. It's really good. And actually having a backup, which is not inside your computer is really important. Um, several years ago, um, I had a Mac Pro in my studio and I had a backup drive inside it and everything was really super. And I came in one day and I'd been burgled and the Mac Pro had gone. 
<gasps> Where's the backup drive? Hmm. Inside the Mac Pro, inside the back of somebody's van driving through West London. So <clears throat> off-site backup is a better thing. Back it up physically, keep it somewhere else, back it up in the cloud, whatever you do. So look, that's my instant lightning uh, tour of my approach to technical troubleshooting. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you do, oh, great. You could always subscribe because when we do this kind of thing, and particularly when we do live things, then you'll get notified and do the little bell thing because a live thing's better when it's live and you only get notified if you're, sub well, you're a subscriber. Okay, anyway, so thanks very much indeed for your company. We'll be back very soon and I'll see you again. Cheerio, bye-bye.